let's continue our exploration of ensemble methods. But this time around, let's take a look at what we can do with a quantum computer. So when we talked about error boost, we mentioned that we used an exponential loss and there was no regularization term. So let's take a look at how we can come up with a different objective function that would map better to a quantum computer and that would give some kind of an advantage over the, the classical method. So we are given a sample of data points and data points, the points themselves lie in some high dimensional space and they come with binary labels in this case. And then we are also given a couple of uh, models which were already learned. So you can think about it, for instance, as large neural networks and we have capital K of them. So now what we do is we measure the square loss between the prediction of, um, of the, the ensemble, which combines the individual models, and the actual label, yi. So this contrasts with the exponential loss that we talked about in Adaboost. So that's, that's the actual loss part. And we have a second part here, which does a regularization. So this, we, we take the, the zero norm of the W weight vector. So the zero norm is just measures how many elements are non-zero. So what it does is if, if we increase the value of this hyperparameter, then it becomes extremely important to have, to have most of the W entries zero. On the other hand, if you decrease lambda, then there's a lower penalty for including more and more elements in this ensemble. So zero means that the model is not included, and the non-zero value means that a particular model will be part of the ensemble. So this way, we can find the trade-off between having a simple model and having some addition to the ensemble that may or may not uh, improve our overall prediction. So in principle, these W weights are not discrete, so it still talk about real values. But what really matters is, is the relative importance and whether they are included. So we can reduce the bit width. So we can use, just say, three bits to represent a weight. And now we have a discrete problem. Now we have to transform it a little bit and use our Hamiltonian encoding, namely the, and one of the two kinds of Hamiltonian encodings, the Ising encoding, and then we can solve it with a quantum annealer or by using QAOA. So here I'm, I'm just rewriting this expression in a different way. So what I do is I expand this, this uh, square loss. So now I have this quadratic term over the sum of the ensemble. Then I have this term which measures the correlation between the output of a, of a predictor and the actual label. We have this term, which is just the, the label squared. We can get rid of it because there's no parameter in it. So it's not going to affect our minimization. And finally, we retain the regularization term as it was. So we can continue working on this equation and we can rearrange uh, different certain terms and move the sums around. So if I write it this way, the first term, then what I get is I end up with this term, which measures the correlation between the individual models. And here you have the, the corresponding weights between, these, uh, between the different models. Then, uh, this should be WL here. So it's a multiplication of, of uh, two weight vectors, sorry, two entries in the weight vector. Then you have this term where you measure the same thing as before. So this is the same kind of correlation between the label and the actual model, weighted by the, the actual weight in the weight vector, plus this regularization term. So in the regularization term, we can get rid of this square root zero, it doesn't make any difference. So now if you look at this part, what you see here is that you have 
elements of the w vector weighted by some numbers. So this is the bias term in the, the Hamiltonian encoding in the Ising model. So this would correspond to the external magnetic field in the Ising model. Well, the only difference is that, that uh, the WK entries are described as bit strings, whereas here we have spins, which take values plus one, minus one, but that's just a shift that's very easy to transform. And then this term here has this interaction, this quadratic interaction between these discrete variables. So this maps to the, the, the sigma i, sigma j interaction with certain couplings. So here you have your Ising model. That's all you have to do. And now you can solve this ensemble problem on a quantum computer.